The first thing we want to do is we want to analyze the horizontal asymptote. And the way you do that is you look at the highest degree term in the numerator and the highest degree term in the denominator, and you analyze their powers, their degrees. So in this case, the highest degree term here is this one. The highest degree term here is this one. But you can see that the denominator's degree is higher than the numerator's highest power term, right? And so what happens is x gets larger and larger, meaning as you go to the right or the left, okay, on this graph, as x gets larger and larger, like a positive number or a large, larger negative number, this is growing faster, meaning the denominator is growing much faster than the numerator. And what happens is the fraction overall gets smaller, 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 it approaches zero. So for these ones, you're gonna get a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. It's gonna be right on the x-axis, okay? So it's gonna be approaching that line. Now, if you are not sure or not confident about it, just go ahead and pick a large value. Like say you pick a 1,000. A 1,000 squared is a million minus nine. See, the nine doesn't make much of an impact. It's still like about a million. And then this was, a, what did we say? It was a 1,000. 1,000 minus three, the three doesn't make much of a difference. But we have a 1,000 over a million, which is one 1,000th, which is 0 0.001. So you can see it's getting very small. So you could approach it that way by picking out a number a larger number and seeing what happens. But again, the degree here in the denominator is greater than the numerator, so we're getting y equals zero for a horizontal asymptote. Now in this one, you can see that the highest degree term in the numerator and the highest degree term in the denominator, they're the same. They don't have to be squared, they could be cubed or fourth degrees and so forth, but if they're the same, that means that this term is growing at the same rate as this term. It's, these terms are growing much faster than these two terms, okay, here. So if we cover those up, the graph's gonna behave like this as x gets very large. And because they're growing at the same rate, what we do is we get the ratio of the coefficients. So in this case, it's gonna be one over two. Our horizontal asymptote is gonna be y equals one half. And then the third scenario is where the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator. Here's where we get like a slant or an oblique or a diagonal asymptote. And the way you would do that is you would take this numerator and you would divide it by the denominator. You could just do the long division and you're gonna get the equation of the slant asymptotes. For this one, I'll just show you. X is going into x squared plus zero x plus one. Let's see, x times x is x squared. If we subtract, we're getting, uh, let's see, just one left over. This is a lower degree than this. This would be plus one over x. But as x gets really large, this term actually goes to zero. So it's really, in this case, just y equals x. So we have a slant asymptote that looks like this on a 45 degree angle or a slope of one. Okay, so that's the slant asymptote. So this is discussing the horizontal and the slant asymptotes. Now the vertical asymptotes, what you wanna do, you wanna factor the numerator and denominator as much as you can. And the reason is, is because, I'll give you an example. Say for example, you factor your, okay, rational function. And let's say you get something like this. X minus two over X plus two over X minus two, X plus three. Now, when you look at the denominator, that's how you analyze the vertical asymptotes. You can't divide by zero. So here you can see that X can't be negative three, okay? X cannot be negative three, and X cannot be two. And you might jump to the conclusion, a lot of students do, that we have a vertical asymptote at two and a vertical asymptote at negative three. But because this term in the denominator is canceling with this term in the numerator, we're actually not gonna get a vertical asymptote there. We're gonna get what's called a removable discontinuity or a hole in the graph. You can check out the video I did on that if you wanna learn more about uh, the removal discontinuities. But for this video, we're just gonna talk about the vertical asymptotes now. And so you're gonna have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. So that's gonna be one, two, three, and there's your vertical asymptote like so. So the key is you wanna factor the numerator and denominator. If any factors cancel out, you don't get a vertical asymptote at those values, you just get a hole. So we're gonna just cancel those out. We're gonna look at the other denominator, x cannot be negative three, and that's where your vertical asymptote occurs. So I hope this uh, little video helped you understand how to find horizontal and vertical asymptotes when you're graphing rational functions. Check out some of the other videos I did talking about graphing rational functions to go a little bit deeper and understand this even better. Uh, subscribe to the channel, check out some more math video, uh, videos on Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel, and I look forward to seeing the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.